He's heard it all before. You're a pastor. You're not supposed to get political. You shouldn't be talking about these issues, so just stay out of politics and stick to preaching the gospel. Life, marriage, sexuality, borders, ethnicity, these things aren't political. They're biblical. God's Word has much to say about the culture we're living in. This is Our Watch with Tim Thompson. Well, hey, happy Sunday to you. I am Tim Thompson, Senior Pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Glad to be with you on this Sunday. Love bringing the Word of God into your life. Truly a blessing to me, and I hope it is a blessing to you as well. With me, as always, is Jake Porter. He is the Assistant Pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Pastor Jake, always good to be with you. Yeah, it's always great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, love going verse by verse, chapter by chapter, through the Word of God with you. Getting uh, biblically literate Yeah. instead of the biblically illiterate condition most people in our culture find themselves in today. Right, right. And that only happens by studying the Word of God, the entire counsel of the Word of God, instead of picking and choosing and taking out what we don't like, studying uh, the Word of God verse by verse and chapter by chapter. Genesis through Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, all the way up to Revelation. All of them. Yep. All Scripture is inspired by God, profitable for everything God has for us to do all that God has called us to do. We're in Ephesians chapter 5 for those who like to follow along. We're going to be talking about marriage, the marriage relationship today. I love talking about marriage. I've been married for almost 30 years. Love being married. I know you've been, how long you've been married? Uh, Six years. Six years. So, um, you know, marriage is good, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When you do it God's way, it's it really truly is a blessing. We're going to talk about what God's Word has to say about the marriage relationship. You and I both preached a message on this. We're going to listen to a portion of it. We're going to come back and talk more about the marriage relationship. Take a listen to this. I'm going to talk about the marriage relationship. Now, like I started to tell you, every relationship that you and I have been given here on earth is a way for God to reveal himself to us. We see that in the father-child relationship. Of course, we see it in a friendship. We can know God as friend, and that's an important thing to to see in our relationship with God. There's even the master-slave relationship, or if, as we call it today, the employer-employee relationship, and you know that's we we see that for sure. I mean, we submit ourselves willingly to God as master, and He lords over us and tells us what to do, and we say yes, Lord. And there's a benefit to us in submitting ourselves to Him. Same thing with you know a, a employer-employee relationship. You, if you're the employer, you bless the employees, you give them a good salary and you want to treat them right and and you expect them to submit to you and do the things that you ask them to do and we see that in our relationship with God. But I think the most valuable relationship that we have and certainly the one that reflects most clearly our relationship with God is that of the marriage relationship. And as we talk about that, I want to first start off by making sure it is very clear that marriage is God's idea. Marriage is God's institution. It is not the government's institution. It is not the government's idea. I was very frustrated several years ago. Many of you remember Prop 8, the Defense of Marriage Act, and trying to defend that marriage would be between one man and one woman. And while I was very upset to see that a handful of corrupt judges overturned the will of the people because we did vote for it to be between one man and one woman. Uh, Prior to that, what made me even more upset is that we ever tried to let the government define it in the first place. Marriage is not the government's idea. This is why here at 412 Church in Temecula Valley, I never sign a marriage certificate. We don't do that here at 412 Church. When I do a, a wedding, I don't say, now, by the power vested in me, by the state of California, I don't do that. Because the power vested in me is not by the state of California, but by God Almighty. Because a marriage is when God supernaturally does something in heaven. The two come together, and God makes them one flesh. It's a supernatural act of God Almighty, not a, not a clerk at a courthouse. God does this. And so we tell people here at, at 412 Church, if you want that marriage certificate from the government, you can go get that. But that's not, that, that's not marriage in the eyes of God. You still come to the church, we'll perform a marriage ceremony, and then after, you, after that, after you're married, then if you want to go get that piece of paper from the courthouse, you can do that. But 
we take marriage very, very seriously here at 412 Church. And we should, because like I said, it's, it best reflects the relationship, and we'll see that very clearly in the scriptures today. It best reflects our relationship with God, with Christ as the head of the church, and the church being the betrothed bride of Christ. Now, as we continue to talk about marriage, I will say this, and it will be very controversial, not amongst us, but amongst the trolls who are watching me right now. Men and women are different. <laughs> Duh, right? Um, women are different than men. I can, and somebody asked me earlier, can you define a woman? Absolutely, I can define a woman. But I don't know women. I'm a guy. I'm still trying to figure you ladies out. Here's the thing, you're probably still trying to figure us guys out. Men and women are different. Listen, ladies, you have a deeply ingrained need to feel loved. And when we talk about love, you want to feel secure, protected, provided for, cherished, nourished, valued in the way you should be because of who you are, a beautiful woman created in the image of a loving God. And men, you have in you a deeply ingrained need to feel respected, to feel valued in the position of leadership God has put you in. And listen, women, when a man is not respected, it damages who he is as a man, and it affects the way he does the things he does. And same thing, men, when a woman does not feel loved, it damages who she is and affects the way she's going to carry out her job as a mother and a wife. It's very important that we understand that on each side of the marriage, the man's side and the woman's side, there are certain needs, and we have to fulfill those needs. Wives, you are, according to God's word, to submit to your husbands. And men, you are to love your wife. Why? That is what God's word is going to answer for us today. All right, so let's get right into it. Ephesians 5, verse 22. Wives, submit to your own husbands. Now, I always love to, to note for all the women that listen to messages like this, God says, submit to your own husband. That means you don't have to submit to somebody else's husband. You got one of your own, and you only have to submit to him. That's, that may be some good news for some that are listening. Um, but they should submit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, when, when they do submit, the, that it reveals something uh, about the heart of that, of that woman. Right. It, re- it reveals the, the respect that she has for God's order uh, of what the Scriptures actually determine for a, a husband and wife and the roles of that wife. Right. And, you know, when a woman does this, there's three reasons we're going to find in the scriptures today, three reasons a woman should submit to her husband. And the first one is that it shows her respect for the Lord. When she's shown respect for her husband, she's showing the Lord that she respects the Lord. And the reason is verse 22 finishes by saying, as to the Lord. So wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. So when you don't submit to your husband, what you're saying is, I don't respect the structure God has instituted. I don't respect my husband as a leader, even though that's what God said should happen. I don't respect him. I don't, I'm not going to submit to him. And and so when you submit to your husband, what you're saying is, I care about the structure. The structure matters. the The fact that God has called my husband to lead matters. So I'm gonna I'm gonna respect that position he's in. I'm gonna submit to his authority, and I'm gonna show God that I actually respect him as well. And Peter, First Peter chapter three says, wives likewise. Be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. Um, this is huge for women that, that say, well, you know, I, I, I shouldn't have to submit to my husband because he, he doesn't even believe in God. Well, he could. If he sees your conduct, you, you may lead him to know the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, he might be won over by by the way that you conduct yourself. Uh, right. That is a possibility. Uh, the, the way that that you respect that man could have an effect on him to to see. Wow, okay, there, maybe there is something to this. Right, right. Especially if if a woman didn't used to submit herself to the authority of her husband and says, "You know what? As a Christian woman, I'm going to do that." And the husband goes, "Whoa, wow, this this is different." 
you know, and start seeing the wife going to church and reading the Bible and listening to Christian radio and all of a sudden, like all of a sudden she's all about the Lord, but then submitting herself to the authority of her husband. He's going to see something. Go, hey, there, there's definitely something to this. Here's a, here's another reason that a wife should submit to her husband. It's because God holds the man responsible for the condition of the family. It says in verse 23, for the husband is head of the wife. So there's a, a there's a lot of responsibility on a man. My wife will tell you, my wife will tell anybody this. The husband has the harder job. My wife will say that. So I, I'm not saying that, but my wife says it. Um but she says, she goes, you have the harder job. And, and we understand this. Everything rises and falls on leadership. You know, when things are going bad in our country, what do we do? We elect somebody new. We, I, don't, I don't like how things are going with this leader. And every, you know, who's, who's, right now, whose fault is the economy? Joe Biden, right? right? Who's, whose fault is the border issue? Joe Biden. I mean, it, because he's the one that is in charge, right? So um, that's how it is. You know, God has placed this leadership role onto the husband. The husband is to lead, provide for, protect, educate the family and and cast vision for the family and what direction the family is going. It's a tremendous amount of responsibility. And so wives should submit to their husbands because God's the one that told the husband he's the one that has to do this. Right. Right. He's the, he's the head of the wife, just as what we see in, in the future, what we'll get to in a second, just as that example of Christ as the head of the church. You have the church being the, the bride of, of Christ and uh, the the head being being the man gives that direction right and, and it's important that 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 head has that respect that we just talked about um, and and that head is is going to be the one that's held responsible right that's going to be accountable to God for the direction right listen listen to this uh, admonition out of first Timothy 5 8 if anyone does not provide for his own especially for those of his own household he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Think about those words from God. You, you're worse than somebody who doesn't even believe in me if you don't take care of your family. So this is this is a lot of responsibility God has placed right. upon the man. Uh, very, very um, intense, really, when you think about it. We've got more to talk about. We're going to take a quick break, listen to a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back after this. Exciting news, Riverside County. 412 Church, Temecula Valley, has moved into our brand new church home, and we're inviting you to join us. Located conveniently right off Jefferson between Rancho, California and Overland, our new location is ready to welcome you with open arms. Join us for one of our four service times at 7 a.m., 8.45, 10.30 or 1215. Our engaging children's ministry and youth ministry are available during the second, third and fourth services. Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Tim Thompson and here at 412 Church in Temecula Valley, we teach the Bible verse by verse and chapter by chapter love to invite you to come out and join us for worship and praise, and let's dive into the Word of God together. For more information, check out 412temecula.com. We can't wait to see you there. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Our Watch. I'm Tim Thompson, and with me, as always, is Jake Porter. We're both pastors over at 412 Church in Temecula Valley. We are talking about the marriage relationship. Yeah, yeah. So far, talking about uh, the wife's role in that, you know, that, that a wife's uh, submission to her husband, it, it shows respect for the Lord, shows her respect for the Lord, and uh, because God holds the, the man accountable and responsible for the condition of the family as right. the head of the family. Right. Um, and th- you know, that's something that men need to take serious, for sure. Yeah. You know, that they're, they do have that, that responsibility. But I'll tell you what, it helps so much when a woman will submit to, to the man. It helps the man. It encourages him. Right. Um, you know, and, and I've, I've often said this too, there, there's certain things where I've told my wife, Hey, this is what, what we're going to do. And she knows that it's not going to turn out well, but she'll say, okay, you know, we'll do that. And we go the direction I think we're supposed to. And we find out, Hey, that, that didn't work. I, I still feel grateful that she at least was willing to follow me in that direction, even though it didn't turn out right. She, she was there with me. And, and then afterwards, she didn't browbeat me. She didn't, oh, see, you know, we shouldn't have done that. No, she's usually there going, hey, don't worry. We'll, we'll do better next time. We'll, you know, we'll get there. Don't worry. And she's always been a, a cheerleader for me. And that's, that's what a man needs. A man needs a, a woman to say, you know, I'm going to be with you through it all. Like, like we say in our vows, you know, through sickness and health, rich or poor, for better or worse, I'm with you. And that's, that's really what a man needs. Another thing is a wife should submit to her husband because marriage is a reflection of the relationship between Christ and the church. 
And verse 23 finishes by saying, as also Christ is the head of the church. So the man's the head of the family, Christ is the head of the church. It says he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Um, so so important that we understand it's in everything. You know, and and that's it's difficult for a woman. I get that. It's hard to to be in that role. And we go all the way back to Genesis in the very beginning when Adam and Eve fell and there was a curse put on the earth. There was a curse put on the serpent and the man and the woman. And the man's curse was he had to work. There was going to be weeds on this earth, and we're going to have to pull those weeds. We're going to have to till the ground. It's going to be difficult to, to make a living. Uh, for the woman, her her curse was pain and childbearing and wanting the position of leadership within the home, desiring that position of head that her husband has. Um, so it's going to be difficult when a, a woman has a desire to be in that position and yet has to submit herself to somebody else's authority. Not easy at all. Yeah, yeah, and I think not that that us men can completely understand that, but we, but I think we can to a degree when you think about how the church is the bride of Christ and how we need to submit to to Jesus and and how challenging that can be as the church, as you and I, to submit to God in every single thing. Like that, that's a challenging thing. No matter right. who you are, no matter where you're at in your Christian walk, that can be a challenge right. of being perfect in your submission to God. And, right. and then in that same way, understanding that of, of a wife, of, of that challenge, submitting to her husband. I think we can somewhat relate to that uh, to a degree. And, and like you said, it, it's hard. It's challenging. But, but it sure is. It, things do work when we do it God's way. Right. Things do work when we submit to the Father. Things do work when, when a, a wife submits to her husband. Yeah. It, it's a blessing. Now, I want to make sure that we mention this just to make sure nobody gets the wrong idea. What what I'm not saying and what the word of God is not saying is that a woman should submit no matter what. So if you know if a husband's demanding that a wife engages in sinful activity, you don't you don't have to submit to that. You know, you you look at um, any example in the word of God, but whenever it's okay, am I going to obey God or obey man? Well, you always obey God. Right. You know, when man is telling you to go against God, you don't have to obey that. So if your husband is saying, hey, this is what we're doing, you better submit to me. And I don't care if God, if it pleases God or not. Like, no, you know, you, you don't have to submit to that. Um, and also if a husband's engaged in physical abuse or endangering the safety of the wife or the children, you don't have to submit to that. Um, and I've, I've seen some really bad examples in churches where churches are saying, it doesn't matter, you submit to that anyways. No. That's that's nonsense. It's not with the heart of God. It's not not what God would expect at all. Um, God would, would God loves women and would never want women to be in that situation. And would never force a woman to to continue in sin or to continue being abused. It's just not the heart of God. Right. Um, now, women are to submit to their husbands. Husbands are to love their wives, and we see this in Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-five. He says, "Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself." For her now, that love that we're talking about, we talked about it last week as well. It's this agape love, this perfect love. There's several love words for love in the ancient Greek. You've got um, eros, which is this erotic love. You've got phileo, which is this this brotherly love. It's a give and take. It's you know, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. You've got the storge love, which is a familial love, something that that you know I have for my brother or my sister or cousin. Um, but the agape love is this love that the Father has towards us, and it's a perfect love that is not an act of emotion. Um, it's it's an act of the will. It's it's a it's a determination to put the other person first, and to put their as we talked about last week. Take off yourself, right? Take off your wants, yeah. your wishes, your needs, desires. Put that down. Put the other person on. Now your wife. Her wants, wishes, needs, and desires become more important than your own. And that cannot be done by emotion. It can only be done by an act of the will. Yeah, and, and that's the type of love that uh, a woman needs to feel from her husband, is that sacrificial agape love. Right. And, and that's the type of love that we, as men, need to demonstrate to our wives. Right. And it's the type of love that God demonstrated towards us. Right. You know, in verse 26 it says that he, that is Jesus, might sanctify and cleanse her her is the church, the, the bride of Christ. So he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. 
So he's the one that did that work for her. He's washing her by the word. He's making sure that she is with spot, without spot or blemish. He's presenting her. So the work is done by him. And same thing with us as men. We need to love our wives, put them first, put on their wants, wishes, needs, desires, make sure that they are taken care of. Um, here's, a, here's another thing. Um, as husbands, we love our wives. Why? Because she's a part of who we are. You know, your wife, Nikki, is a part of you. Right. And my wife, by the way, is also named Nikki. She's a part of me. Um, you cannot separate. And I, I often say this kind of jokingly, but it's true. Um, you can't tell me, hey, you know what, Pastor Tim, I love you. I can't stand Nikki. I can't stand that woman. Well, then you don't love me, you know, because she's a part of me. She's a part of who I am. You know, it, that, it doesn't work to say, well, I love you, but not that part of you. Right. You know, it just doesn't work. Um, you know, and, and men have to embrace that, that that woman that God has given you is now a part of who you are, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. You know, for this reason, verse 19, I'm sorry, chapter 19 of Matthew, um, Matthew's gospel says, this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So then there are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. That woman is now part of who you are. Right. And, and I think it's important to love her that way. You know, we right. think about our own wants, our own desires, our own, you know, the things that we want. It's easy to fulfill that. But that should be the heart behind the, the love that we have for our wife is that we would even more so love to put on her wants and her desires and her wishes. What you were talking about earlier, taking off yours and putting on hers. Yeah. Um, and and it's because she's part of who you are. You should want to do that. Right. But that's the type of love that you have for your wife. Yeah. I saw I saw one time this, this guy was eating food and his wife's like you went and got something to eat yeah well did you get me anything he said, no get get yourself something and I was like what what how 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 could you do that that's bone of your bone flesh of your flesh you know if you're hungry she's probably hungry too you know and the thing is as men we would say okay let's make sure she has food before I do right because we're the provider you know so it's it's weird to me this is this is this change that has to take place in the heart of a man when he, he's given a wife, which by the way, the Bible says a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. If God gives you a wife, that that idea of taking yourself off has to become very clear, very real, and, and very quickly. You, you have to embrace that, that now you have somebody else that you're going to be loving and, and putting before yourself because she's a part of who you are. And it says in verse 29, nobody ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, of his bones. For this reason, a man, like it says in Matthew 19, also here in Ephesians 5, the man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. We, yep. we, we are part of one another. You hurt her, you're hurting me, you know? Um, finally, we just have a, a little bit of time left here. Um, a husband should love his wife because marriage is a reflection of the relationship between Christ and the church. And it says in verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning the church, um, concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, each one of you in particular, so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. It's a great mystery, but the, the marriage relationship truly does represent our relationship with Christ. Right. And I, I think I said this last week, but you do things God's way and it works. Yep. You know, a husband loves his wife and a wife submits to her husband and respects him. And it's amazing to see that, that the things of God's word work. Right. There's a way that God has prescribed for marriage to function. You do it his way and you find that marriage is actually enjoyable, despite what the culture wants to tell you. Right. Marriage is actually a great thing and it's, yeah. and it's greatly enjoyable. Yeah. I, anytime I hear a man say, oh, I got the old ball of chains with me, like, man, you've got marriage wrong if you think that that's what a wife is. Right. Why you find a wife, you find a good thing. I want to encourage you, if you are having trouble in your marriage, you want to find out more about what God has to say about it, reach out to us at the church. You can go to info at 412 Temecula.com. The number's 412. Love to talk to you about marriage. Love to share more about what God has to say about that. So that way you can have a marriage that best reflects the relationship between you and Jesus. That's all the time we have. God bless you. We'll see you next time right here on Our Watch with Tim Thompson. This has been a production of Our Watch with Tim Thompson. We hope you're encouraged to engage the culture around you. 
We want to invite you to connect with Pastor Tim by going to the Connect page on ourwatch.com. That's O-U-R watch.com. Until next time, this is all of us at Our Watch reminding you to be bold, be strong, and to take back the public square.